that you know the prices will go up, and he's saying, I'm saying that um, that with ne net neutrality prices will go up, and he's saying that without net neutrality prices will go up. Um, you know, to counter that, that you know those investments that I was talking about earlier from that the ISPs are receiving, those are huge, and those are why the internet, like I said earlier, is where it's at. That's why it has been continuing to innovate, and why that's allowed. And um, and um, you know these costs, the costs that he was talking about that you know we could sometimes have, they're necessary. You know, I mean, right now where the internet is at, you know, it's still you know continu continuing to grow, and yeah, we do have those charges. But if we have net neutrality, those charges are going to be outstanding, and they're going to be significantly more. Um, and the plan that the FCC put out, um, have the New York. <laughs> Times who you know commented on it, uh, they said that they talk, talk, talk about affordability, but when you look at the plan that the FCC put out, most people's prices are going to go up. It typically costs $100 a month for net access at speeds of 50 meg megabits to 100 megabits, which is, what, which is what my opponents are saying that we should all have that all in, you know all sites should have that equal that equal speed, but you know that's going to be ridiculously hard to achieve, and if anything, it's going to slow those sites that right now we're having those that high access or high speed access to, those are going to be slowed down. And instead, um, sites that, you know, span sites, that means that those sites should have the same access as, let's say, a new site, or maybe, you know, a library's website, or a school site. Um, also, I'd like to point out that you know the the new policy that they're trying to advocate. You know it goes against the laws that we have established now that are you know in motion and that um, according to the National Review Online, the FCC lacked the statutory authority to force broadband companies to allow all content providers non discriminatory access to their networks. Um, you know by not enforcing net neutrality and maintaining the the laws that we have now, it respects the rule of the law and that Congress's constitutional authority to set interstate communications policy and the Constitution's protections and court precedent. And it keeps all those intact according to the Atlantic Wire. Um, um, the New York Times also states that uh, chief among the schools, FCC wants future broadband investments to be focused on the areas where gaps in service remain. It will direct this investment in part through the Universal Service Fund, a program for telephone and internet access costing $8 billion annually, paid through a phone bill surcharge. Meaning that FCC is looking to, you know, by enforcing net neutrality and trying to start up this new government regulated internet, they're going to be putting these charges, you know, on telephones and they're going to be taking away funds from, you know, from phone bills and or from money that they allocate towards our phones, and they're going to be putting them towards the internet. Meaning they're going to be, you know, hurting those those areas of our government they already have in place. And um, I have the National View Online also says that besides, as it stands, these companies compete vigorously against one another in a way that is beneficial to consumers. If one of them makes an unpopular business decision, its customers can go elsewhere. If, however, an unelected FCC chairman dictates uniformity in the services these companies provide, then there's nowhere Americans can turn for innovations uh, the government may have strangled in the cradle. So, in conclusion, um, what the FCC or what my um, opponents are trying to say is that this new government, you know, uh, policy, it's going to be create uniformity throughout you know, the whole internet business, and it's going to, you know, they're saying it's going to create, you know, equality, but really it's going to hinder innovation, and it's going to set us back, and, you know, looking at how, how fast we're improving and innovating and the speed that the internet is developing, it's going to, you know, halt that, it's going to, in the end, it's going to hurt the internet, <coughs> and not really, you know, create the internet that really we're looking for for the future.